A few years ago, I did a tutorial showing the issues with false banding and how to avoid them. But now, with the latest version of Photoshop, you can eliminate the problem completely and get a better histogram to boot. In order to help clearly illustrate the problems of false banding, I've created three extreme examples starting with this radial gradient, which should be smooth from center to edge, but obviously shows a number of bands. In the second example, I should see a nice smooth color gradient from top to bottom, but obviously there's a lot of color banding near the top, and I don't know if this is going to come through well over YouTube or not, but the bottom of my screen shows obvious banding as well. It's just a little more subtle than the extreme banding that I see up top. And then in this third example, I've got obvious banding in the right hand side of the sky as well as to the left. And whenever you have a smooth sky in an image underneath and make a few adjustments, that's when you're at risk of seeing some sort of banding like this in a real image. That's the most common scenario. Now, what do I mean by false banding? Each of these images are 16-bit. You can see the little 16 on the right. 16-bit images should not show banding. And in fact, this banding that we see here is false banding. It's an artifact of the preview we're getting. If I right-click and choose to flatten my image, the banding goes away. This is the real image. When you flatten the image, you're looking at a real image. And this is what we would get in a JPEG or if we were to go view things in Lightroom or some other application where we're not working directly with the layers. But as soon as I undo and get back to layers, I have all this weird banding. What's going on here? Well, we're viewing this image at about a quarter size, 26% here. And we have these different layers, not many, but each layer adds some new calculation to blend or perhaps a curve and then we have to blend it together. And then there's blending modes and opacity and fill. And we might have layer mass and vector mass and blend if and all these things we can do to our layers, they take time to calculate. Watch what happens again if I go flatten the image. Watch how long it takes to actually flatten the image. It took about a second to do that. Whereas if I undo it, if I want to make a change to the curve here, I go move this opacity, I get an immediate result. Imagine if every time I did something, we had a delay. And you know, keep in mind that this is with just a few layers on a very fast M1 MacBook Pro. If I had a more complex image with more layers on a slower machine, the difference would be enormous. So what we really have here is that the engineers at Adobe have come up with some very clever ways to analyze all this layer content and generate a preview that's so good, most of the time you think it's the actual image, but it's not. They're just speeding up the process by taking some shortcuts because for example, you know, at a 25% view, why would it calculate the entire image? That's a waste of time, a waste of battery life on your computer when it can show us a preview, which most of the time is gonna work really well. It's just in a few examples like this banding where we're, we're seeing some problems with those shortcuts start to show up. Thankfully though, Adobe has just released a permanent fix for this issue, and I'm gonna jump from the version of Photoshop I'm using right now to show the problem in 2021 over to the latest version of Photoshop. This is specifically version 23.5 uh, version of 2022. In this version, we can see that there isn't any banding here. And what I've done is we go up to Photoshop, Preferences, Technology Previews. In the Tech Previews, we get access to the latest and greatest features that are being considered for Photoshop. And the bottom one here is this precise previews for 16-bit documents. You want to make sure that this is checked, hit OK, and restart Photoshop. When you restart Photoshop with this active, the previews are going to be calculated based on the 16-bit data in the image, rather than in the past, we look at the old version, the older design of Photoshop. One of the shortcuts it took was it calculated an 8-bit version of the image rather than, than working from the 16-bit data and so there was banding coming through in the preview. So let's just take a look at how much better this looks here. Here's our banded radial gradient versus with the new tech preview, we have this beautifully smooth result. Or if we take a look at the color banding, and you can see here we get a beautifully smooth result versus the obviously banded result in the older design without the tech preview. And then in the last one, we can compare our banding in the sky to the right and the left versus with the tech preview, things are nice and smooth. There is no banding and we're getting a result now, which is for the most part, exactly the same as the flat image. I say for the most part, because there is still a little bit of a caveat. This doesn't fix every problem. There are some other artifacts of banding, which have nothing to do with 8-bit data. 
And in fact, this image uh, will show that a bit. If I take this image and create a stamp of it, I'm just gonna hit Command Option Shift E. Notice that these buildings on the left got brighter. If I go from before or after, or just kind of hide my stamp, the stamp is the real view of the image. And you can see that before and after there is no banding, but there is this additional content we're seeing here. And, and what's going on here is we're viewing this at 26%. We're not seeing all the pixels. So in the preview, it's just calculating some of the pixels for us. Whereas in the flattened version, with that more rich calculation, we're getting better results. So what I'm trying to tell you is that in cases of rapid change, like the edge of a dark to light transition, you may see some false previews still. So this is not gonna solve everything, but it does really help address the main issue, the one you're much more likely to see, which is banding in the sky and that sort of thing. And it has a very cool secondary benefit. Notice that our histogram here has all these spikes in the old version, whereas in the new tech preview, we have a beautifully smooth gradient. We're looking at the same image, same content, but we've got a better histogram in the new version. Now we've always had the option to click on the little hazard triangle here and update, and now we'll see that it matches. We just force Photoshop to take a little time to update the histogram accurately, and we get that result. But as soon as we make any change to the document, like toggling opacity, we're back to the preview version of our histogram. And so we'd again have to click on the triangle or the refresh to do the same thing and make this calculation, which in this case works pretty quickly, but it's kind of a hassle and it can take a while on a more complex document. Whereas in the new version, we get this all the time. It's not exactly perfect, but it's so close. You really can't tell the difference. If I go click to update it, there's just no visible difference here. The statistics change a little bit, but the histogram, it's very accurate. So good, in fact, watch what happens if we go take a levels adjustment. And if I start moving around the gamma slider, at all times, I see a nice, accurate histogram down below here. If I go in the old version of things, let's go turn on our levels adjustment and move this gamma slider. You see that we get like just all these spikes. We have a low quality histogram. So that's the other benefit of this new tech preview is we get not only beautiful looking previews that are much more accurate, we also get much more accurate histograms. And now be sure to click on these videos to learn more about Photoshop.